Hello everybody, this is Starman, and welcome back to Let's Play Discworld 2. Well, we're here at the start of Act 2, we're in Ankh Morpork, and we need to find a way to get to Forex. But first things first, we're going to walk around a little bit and see what has changed since Act 1. Uh, for one thing, the librarian is now taking a nap inside the dining hall. Ah, my old friend the Arboreal Ape! That's the nice thing about Ankh Morpork, it's an equal opportunity kind of place. He's always ready to knuckle down and work for peanuts, too. Let's see if we can talk to him real quick. Busy! <laughs> well, I suppose he works for peanuts. Double joke. So, do you have any ideas about what I should do? <laughs> I don't know if I want to just sleep on it. Every time I stop moving for a while, these flies start buzzing everywhere. Still, could be worse. Sometimes this zooming star field just seems to start whooshing straight towards my eyes. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I think I need to get my eyes seen too. Now there's the sort of fella you can rely on. Faithful, intelligent, arboreal. Still, there must be some good in him. I wonder which bit. Sorry, can't stay and chat all day. Must be off. Now, we can't take the librarian with us, but we need a reason to do so. Apart from life always being improved by having a librarian with you. And we do, of course, have this food here just waiting to be taken, but we need something to put it in. Apart from the luggage. And then we have the high-energy facility. Which I don't think anybody here has anything useful to say. Not that they did before. Oh, like, wow! I see, I see, like, a totally new world. It's kind of... Yeah! But, yep. Oh, man. Same dialogue as before. Bah! And probably the same from Ponder. Hmm, I don't see this as being a new age in me. Still, I could try... Yep, same from him. Sorry, can't stay in chat all day. Must be off. And... Bye for now! I think Skaz will say something later, but only once we need Hex, which at the moment, we don't. But there is one thing we can do in the garden now. And that is, we can now pick up all the croquet hoops. Because in this case, the game will let us indulge our kleptomania. Eight croquet hoops made from bent pieces of wire. Yeah, ordinarily Rincewind would never say eight, but uh, the game apparently does not have the limitations that wizards have about saying the magic number. And the suffragester has now moved over here. The suffragester, doing what I can only call a tied up routine. Women want the joke. Jokes for women. Female jesters can be every bit as dried up and cliched as a man. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Oh, no, not again. We shall not, we shall not be moved. What, never? What? Well, obviously not never. I mean, there's cause of nature for a start. The protest would lose some of its majesty if I didn't nip off now and then for a quick, well, you know. Oh, I see. Then there's sundry other emergencies. I mean, if a tidal wave, right, came sweeping this way, right, then the protest itself could hardly be seen to suffer if I screamed in fright, untied myself and fled in the opposite direction. Just common sense, really. Live to fight another day, that sort of thing. Still, all in all, we will not be moved involuntarily, except by cause of nature, cause of supernature, or through other extraneous circumstances that we can't really control. Fine. Possibly the most carefully thought out protest song I've ever heard. It seems to me there has to be a better way of doing this sort of thing. Have you ever considered maybe distributing leaflets? 
Hmm, thought of it. But it's a bit hard passing out leaflets when I'm roped up here, right? Um, I don't think you quite understand my point. But then who does? Is it a good place for this kind of thing? I mean, is the university garden really the most effective place to be getting your message across? Not really. Still, what it lacks in street presence, I feel it makes up for with a certain rural charm, don't you? Ah, sun in the trees, the wind in my hair, the rather interesting feel of hemp bounds as they restrain me. Uh, are you married at all? Um, excuse me, I think I hear my mother calling. Leaving us, of course, to ask the question, just how does she manage to tie up both of her own ends? It is possible. I'm not going to tell you how I know that, but it is possible. See you later. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't think there's anything useful at the cemetery anymore. Yep. Hello again, young lady. Feeling any urges to gird your loins, put on a chainmail bikini, and hack the heads off a few dozen monsters? No! My loins aren't easily girded. Shame. When I was a lass, we never thought twice about having a good gird. Oh my. So business is a bit slow then? Yes and no. I've been doing a good business in those dribbly candles. You can get hours of fun watching a candle make a good dribble. Really? Oh, yes. Will it go this way? Will it go that way? Will it build up to a proper drip? Or just run onto the tablecloth? Oh, it's gripping watching candles. I don't think I'll be able to stand all that excitement. You know, looking through this shop makes me think of all the things my life has been missing. The chill breath of dungeon air, the clink of looted treasure, the rippling of torches in the wind, staggering home drunk with bloodlust after receiving a good hard sucking chest wound. <sighs> oh, for a simpler life. Yeah, at the time that this game originally came out, the RPG was starting to die out a little bit along with the adventure game. So there's a little bit of uh, commentary there. Very little. Cool, that's enough of this conversation for me. Yeah, nothing else in the shop that we need to pick up, but nice little bit of conversation there. Now, you, we saw a ship earlier. One ship, probable weight, 400 tons. Probable top speed, three knots. The trouble with this sinking ship is all the rats have stayed aboard. Well, splice me timbers if it isn't a nautical seafaring matelow with a yo-ho-ho -ho and a deep design sigh. Hmm, a ship to far off foreign climes. That's what I need, but how on earth to get on board? Hint, hint, hint. Rawr, rawr, yoik, soy, a vaster, mate, yo. Rawr. Oh, tis a fair sharp of wind as blows past the scud and sails, or else there ain't no evo in the sea biscuit, me blighty o. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry about that. I thought you were a sailor. A sailor? Why is that? It's the jolly cut of your nautical bell button robe. Me? I'll get sick on a wet pavement. I can't even tell the difference between port and starboard. Oh, I wouldn't know. I've only drunk port. Eh. <laughs> No, nope. I'm stumped on this one. All salty sea phrases aside, do you actually sail anywhere interesting? Oh, aye, lad, aye. We go to the sunny continent of 4X. Sun, surf, sand. Sun, surf. Prawns, sand, sun. Um, and more surf. Lots more sun. And uh, rather persistent jokes about sheep. For some reason. 
Yeah, well, let's forget about the sheep jokes for now. Oh, oh I wish I could. Oh, believe me. Good grief! Look, can I get passage aboard your ship? Oh, can't be done, my old want-to-be shipmate. I'm only taking the living dead on this trip. Special civic arrangement. Arr! But be a good lad and sit on Uncle Bushbeard's knee and I'll tell him many a tale of the rolling sheep. Damn! I meant deep! No, no, that's all right. You just go off somewhere and have a nice long drink of starboard. Let's just stop all this now. Okay, so clearly we need to get on that ship. But the only way we can get on the ship is to prove it's to either become undead or do a convincing job of faking it. And the milkmaid is gone. I suppose if I ever need a devious, slimy, utterly shameless, clicky director, I'll know where to come. Gosh. Now that has... Yeah, nothing new from Dibble. Excuse yet. me, I, I think it's probably time for me to take my medicine. Hello again. He said... Yeah, he said, what are you doing standing about here all day when the cosmos is going down the privy? Hey, I think I'm getting the hang of this. Just fancy. 20 years of school and finally you've mastered the ability to talk to a rat. Your mother must be so very proud. If you ever had a mother. Well, obviously Rincewind did have a mother, but he has claimed repeatedly that his mother uh, ran away before he was born which coming from anybody except Rincewind would seem rather unlikely. Well, we got a cart full of dead here. Bring out your dead! Luxury post-mortem transportation service, five-star service, highly record. Bring out... So, where do you transport your corpses? Oh, well, it used to be all mountains, you know, scenic locations. Very cold, you see, so the customers enjoyed it for longer before all their bits fell off. But you should see the place we've just found now, sir. Beaches, hats with corks, and blondes with these huge, straining, pink, oil-smeared... Yes, 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 but how do I get there? Tracks well, of land. You'd have to be dead, sir. We've got the entire season's passages already booked. Look, are you telling me? that I have to be dead in order to qualify for tourist travel? Well, yes, sir. But it's a very reasonable option. We let you take all the luggage you want. Why is that? It's all classed as carrying baggage, sir. <laughs> um, that was just another little undertaker's joke. It's a good thing you have a captive audience. Why not just tell me how to get to this holiday location of yours? Just a death certificate should do it, sir. It's the only way to tell these days. Got one, have you? Not as such, however. Be seeing you then. Actually, let's see. Bring a... Bring... Yeah, that's all repeated, but... Hello again, sir. Beautiful day for it. Beautiful day? A beautiful day for what? Well, for being dead, sir. Have you considered it at all? All the advantages? Advantages? What advantages could there possibly be? Well, lower clothing bills, no more overheads for food, for winter fuel, lower rent. Lower rent? Well, the dead don't move around much. You might say that they don't need as big a set of digs. <laughs> That's just a little undertaker's joke, sir. I'll keep away from them if I were you. Otherwise, you'll end up a stock in trade. So how do you transport your corpses, anyway? We have a great big galley for all that. Of course, with the dead so vigorous these days, they're only too keen to work the oars themselves. We just can't stop them. Why's that? Turns out they like sculling. <laughs> sculling with the oars. <laughs> sculling. Oars. Dead. Get it? Just trying to inject a little humour? 
What'd life be like if you had no sense of humor? You tell me. So, you need a death certificate just to qualify for foreign travel. Hmm. In many ways, death's a small price to pay for getting out of this place and starting new life somewhere else. Well, new life for a given value of life. Look, I'm afraid I have to be somewhere else. And I'm just curious... ...if the small medium at large has anything to say about this. Right, well, thank you. Well, go on, ask it. I get a migraine if you don't ask the right questions once the answers have come. Hello, Mrs. Cake. How are you? That's better. Hmm. Is there much of a commercial call for ectoplasm? You should pause for thought. A psychic, eh? Well, who'd have thought it? You did, dear. About three minutes from now. Do you really get away with all this? Just pretending to read other people's thoughts for a living? Well, it's not as if I'm making money at it. Ask most people to cross your palm with silver and they look at you like you're some sort of beggar. The only fringe benefit these days is the ectoplasm. Ectoplasm? What do you use that for? Never you mind. All right, nothing new here. See you later. Okay, so we need to get a death certificate, which I think would mean the coroner's office is the place to go. And, ah, uh, he is at work. The city mortician. I wonder if this is what he wanted to be at school. How'd you learn? I mean, you start off small with goldfish and so on. I mean, it's a necessary job, don't get me wrong, but it's a... Boy, it doesn't sound like a number one choice, that's all I'm saying. I've forgotten what's starting me off on this now. I think I've been catching too much of that embalming fluid. I wonder if he caters for takeaway. Hello! Dead. Why, come in, sir. Come in and decompose yourself. I'm not dead, I was just being polite. Not even a little bit dead? Not fading away? No nagging little cough or unexplained twinge or tiny touch of fever? Come now, surely you can make the effort? No. No, no. I suppose not. All the fun's going out of this business these days. Can't you see that this woman isn't dead? Oh. You think you are qualified to judge, do you? But she isn't dead! Just look at her! Oh, I see. Look at Mr. Expert. That's your expert opinion, is it? An expert in being alive, then, are we? Well, yes. Uh, I suppose everyone is. That's the problem with this job. There's no way of gaining any respect. What is it that you do, exactly? Well, I issue all the death certificates, make sure they're really dead, that sort of thing. We can't have people being buried alive, you know? I should certainly say not. Yes, they'd be hell to pay at the graveyard. All the undead would be on me like a shot. Live bodies in a dead-only area, wrongful zoning of designated areas, the lot. Very touchy lot, the undead. What have they got to be snobby about? Been there a long time, you see. They're getting very touchy with this epidemic and everything. When you've got yourself a nice grave, good view, patio and barbecue pit, well, you get a bit iffy when a lot of newcomers suddenly turn up. Only to be expected. How does one get to be declared dead round here? Simple, sir. Just lay down on that slab. When a cold mirror won't cloud with your body's breath and there's no detectable pulse, then we can safely declare the individual to have passed beyond. Even if they're still walking and talking? I've had to relax those criteria, sir. In the current situation, it pays to be flexible in your definitions. All right. Well, at least they're cheap and thorough. Anytime I feel myself coming over dead, I think I'll just nip in here for a lie down. So we need to... Let's just stop all this now. We need to fool the mirror, which is an actual test they used to use for seeing if a person was dead. Just hold the mirror under their, you know, 
nose and see if they fog it. And we need to make sure we don't have a pulse. Well... And a good thing we just happen to have this wooden arm. The honey would only make it... Okay, yeah, I need to clear my inventory a bit first, my personal inventory. So we'll put the honey in the luggage, grab wooden arm, stick that on me. This should fool him. Oh, wait. And somehow the wooden arm went right back to the luggage. This should fool him. All right, now double click. All right. Um, look, I'm feeling a little bit dead. And so I thought I'd better just pop along and see you. Right. A very wise decision, if I may say so, sir. Now, we'll do a few little standard tests. He's got some rubber stick eyeliner. I'll check your breath, see if it clouds up this mirror. Okay, now I'll check your arm for a pulse. Hmm, looking good so far, sir. Just one last test. Your body temperature. No, wait! Perhaps we can talk about this! Bad news, I'm afraid, sir. You still seem to be in the land of the living. Are you sure? Afraid so, sir. I can't really offer any hope. You might go on like this for years and years. Well, I suppose I'll just have to go on then. Never mind, sir. You never know what tomorrow might bring. Chin up. For all you know, you might be dead in no time. Okay, so, little hidden requirement. We also have to lower our body temperature. And how are we going to do that? Well, medieval setting. Let's just leave him alone. The only thing that can really do that trick is some ice. And we just so happen to have some ice right here. Of course, I can't just pick that up with my bare hands, but luckily, I can pick out a nice chunk. But you do have to move quickly because the ice does melt. So here we go, far end of the shades. Fooling. Oh, wait, I do need to uh, do the mirror again first. I'm afraid I can't pick that up. And wooden arm is back here, so. Good up. Okay, right, I have to lie on the slab. Putting that on the slab won't help. <sighs> okay. I'm trying to click on your inventory. 
Thank you. Okay, so lie on the slab first. Ah. This part is incredibly annoying. Okay, so do that. Double click for the inventory. Poking me only serves to prove that I'm still alive. There we go. This should fool him. And the ice. If it's low body temperature he wants, then it's low body temperature he'll get. Okay, and double click partition. Hello again. Look, I'm virtually sure this time. I've been feeling a little bit dead most of the night, but I definitely felt myself pop me clogs a few minutes ago outside. Would you care to just take a little look? Firstly, I'll check your breath, see if it clouds up this mirror. Okay, now I'll check your arm for a pulse. Hmm, looking good so far, sir. Just one last test. Your body temperature. No, wait! Perhaps we can talk about this! Oh, you knew this was coming. Wonderful news, wow. sir. Wonderful news. Yes? Am I dead? As a doornail, sir. Finally, a satisfied customer at last. Now then, here's a death certificate, which also entitles you to cut price headstone carving, embalming, and free drinks at the yearly mortician's ball. Mortician's ball? Doesn't sound like much fun to me. Oh, you know, sir, once the old embalming fluid starts flowing, of course it kills you at the end, but what doesn't, eh? Well, have a nice death. And please don't hesitate to call round again if there's anything I can do for you. All right. Cool, a death certificate. Now that I'm decently dead, I can get on with my life. A great big ice block? Yeah, now all I need is a martini the size of a bird bath. Oh, that does sound awesome right now, but... We can't go lying around with a margarita or a martini right here. We need to go lie around someplace else. Right! Well, hop on, sir! We'll soon have you off to a post-mortem holiday! Did I tell you the one about the carrion luggage? Afraid so. Ah, well. Can't win them all. Or any of them, come to think of it. Arr, arr, yo ho ho, me matey! Shiver your timber, a vast improvement! Stop that! Oh please, it's genuine nautical gibberish. No, I've told you about that. I'm only doing business with you if you stop all that ridiculous yo-ho-ho -ho business. It's demeaning. But it's establishing character. No, it's establishing that you are a loony. This is supposed to be a sea voyage, not Captain Sea Dog's little shipmate's holiday fun club. Look, if we're going to sea, then we ought to establish ourselves as acceptable stereotypes of sea-going characters. It all stands to reason. Now you can't hold me responsible for the paradigms which grip our customers. They expect this sort of thing. They don't think you're real without all that avast the main brace ah, business. Word of mouth advertising can make or break a business like mine. Word of mouth? They're dead. Oh. Oh, all right. Just bring them on board then and we'll forget all about it. And hurry up. After this trip, I have to go take a crew to Monkey Island. Hoist, hoist, or oh locker, baby, or oh wooden, wooden, or man, oh stop it, no. What? 
Uh, nothing. Just, um, <clears throat> clearing my throat. There's something very odd about you. As I were walking down Paradise Street, singing hey ho, a blow the man down. A saucy young cuttlefish I chanced there to meet. Oh, give me some time to blow the sheep up. Damn! I say, any chance of a cup of tea, my nautical arty? Arr! That's the ghost of Captain Lavender Beard. Back from Davy Jones's bathroom. Run for your lives, women and fearless sea dogs first. You know, I seem to meet more crazy people than sheer coincidence should allow. Anyway, looks like I'm in control now. And another nice little uh, Monty Python joke here with the Terry Gilliamish animation. Well, not really, but it looks like a cardboard cut. At least that sea monster does. So yeah, here is the disc itself. Got the main continent, the counterweight continent, and the land of Forex in the northeasterly corner there. Bone Die Beach, of course. You! There you are! Bone Idol, I see! Come on, get up and get back to work. It's chaos back there! No. I like it here. It's a land of opportunity. Sun, surf, and prawns. I can see the sun's giving you a nice bleach. Come on, we're going home. No. I'm not going back. I worked my fingers to the bone for them, but they all hate me. Hate you? What does that matter? You're death! You're not supposed to worry about things! You just... just happen! Well, I want more from life. A little bit of popularity. It's not too much to ask, is it? I work hard for everybody. Does anyone ever say thank you? I think not. Thank you? For dying? Uh, look. If I promise you that I'll find a way of making you popular, will you come back? People will like me. You promise? Cross my heart and hope to meet you in your professional capacity. Now, is it a deal? Hmm. All right. But only if you make me feel wanted. I have just the thing to bring the message into the people's hearts and minds, my dear fellow. Tell me, have you ever heard of something called the clickies? A clicky, you say? Something to make a legendary figure more personally popular? That's a challenge and a half, that is. But nothing modern marketing techniques can't handle. You just leave it to old Dibbler. All right, but I wanted to have integrity. Just make it nice. Nice? Of course it'll be nice. I'll tell you what, I'll splice you in for half a take, but mind, I'm cutting my own throat. Now, tell me what talent you got lined up. This uh, lead of yours. Nice, um, upper balcony, is she? Um, no. Oh, well, what, a skinny one then, eh? Long and lean, eh? Whoa. Well, quite lean, yes. I've got it then. I've got the angle. Works as a shipwright by day over at the docks. Sweat, 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 wood shavings, and torn, tight little shirt, and then dances in an exotic nightclub every evening. We clap a soundtrack on it, and we got a hit for sure. A shipwright who dances in a topless bar? What the hell do you take our audiences for? For about three groat a ticket, why? What's wrong? The formula's perfect. I'm just not so sure my principal lead is going to make a very convincing exotic dancer. I mean, sex-wise and all. You mean they're a man? Well, I suppose he's a man. It's hard to tell, really. You have to look at the pelvis, don't you? They keep you wizards indoors too long. That's your problem, mate. Look, I'll tell you what, we can sell anything. 
just as long as we have the right marketing. You know the product, so I'll leave all that with you. We need three things to make this a success. You've been waiting for this bit, haven't you? Just waiting for it. Yes. First and foremost, a gorgeous babe. That's just a pro forma for the press. Next, you need a really catchy jingle, a song we can clap into the soundtrack. Finally, we need a gimmick, a novelty merchandise that actually creams the cake. Get me those three things, and I'll have a film out in no time. Collect a babe, a jingle, and some novelties. I don't suppose you'd consider collecting them yourself. Nah, mate. What sort of fool would waste his valuable leisure time voluntarily going off on annoying little quests set by stupid and ungrateful people, eh? <laughs> yes, he'd have to be some sort of idiot, wouldn't he? Oh well, see you in a little while then. <laughs> Take axe, open door, kill dragon. Why wasn't I born in the days of text adventures? Death, old chap, we are gonna make you a star. And with that, we now have the whole of the disc open to us to explore. And we shall start doing that next time. Until then, take care.